my first lesson or initiation into maybe call it spirituality happened right here in Vrindavan. As brother mentioned, I came here after engineering. Truth be told, I came here because an MBA degree along with engineering is a good combination from a career perspective. Of course, my parents have been devotees, we have been devotees, we came here a number of times. And I will maybe go back and talk about some of those incidents. But I came here primarily for an MBA degree for a better career. That is the reality. And then the transformation started happening. I'm reminded of this story of, uh, you must have heard of this um, very famous statue in Italy in a place called Florence, called the David. It's a very famous statue from the Renaissance time by the world famous sculptor called Michelangelo. And this is made from one of the finest marbles you can find in the world, which is called the Marble of Carrara in Italy. So there was a huge block of this very expensive marble lying. And these Italian kings had asked, had commissioned two or three sculptors to create a statue of David to represent, you know, that David versus Goliath, the story, to represent the victory of David over the Goliath. So some uh, accomplished sculptors came, looked at the statue, looked at that block of marble and said it has too many blemishes, there are too many imperfections, so it cannot be done. And they left it. And then Michelangelo came and he said, I will take up this work. They said, are you sure? Because some more accomplished names have previously said no and went away. So are you sure you want to do this? He said, yes, I will. And he started working on that. It took him about two years. He sculpted away at it and eventually came this David, which is probably 400 or 500 years old now, it is still considered a masterpiece. And that is what God does with us. Chip away our imperfections. He accepts us with all our blemishes, with all our imperfections, and he creates a masterpiece out of us. And Swami used to say this, you're a zero without me, you're a hero with me, which is true. And we have seen this, experienced this at several stages in our lives, in our careers. In fact, I remember the day when I, the first time when I was asked to speak in uh, Puttaparthi, I was told the previous day evening, I was, I was a nervous wreck. Speaking in public, speaking in front of more than two people was something that made me terribly nervous. I just could not open my mouth. I was very nervous. So I said, I protested. I said, no, 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 I cannot, I cannot. So this person who told me, he said, I'm sorry, I cannot do anything. If you can't, then you will have to tell the registrar. The registrar at that time was uh, Chakravarti Garu, who is currently the chancellor. And we were probably more afraid of him than Swami. So I said, no way, I will not take that risk. So I started as I took a paper and started writing. First thing I wrote, Om Shri Sai Ram. Then the next thing is, I offer my humble pranams at Swami's lotus feet. And then my mind went blank. 
I, I was just not able to write anything. My mind was completely blank. And I was looking here and there, this side and that side, looking for ideas. There was one boy sitting next to me, he was a Malayali a boy, he is currently a faculty member. He was sitting next to me writing a letter in those days. I don't know if you boys have seen an inland letter, uh, the, a postal, uh, a blue color postal thing. So he was writing, everything was in Malayalam. All of it was in Malayalam. There was one sentence in English. And that sentence said, Swami says, do not prepare for a speech. I was, I was not sure why on earth would he write, I don't know first thing when Swami said that. I don't remember Swami saying that in the recent times. Of course, this was about, I think one and a half months since we, we joined college. So I don't remember when Swami said, but I looked again just to reconfirm that he did indeed write that. And it said that, Swami says, do not prepare for a speech. So now I, was started, I started to feel guilty. I said, I can't keep writing this. So I, anyway, I was blank, not pro making much progress. So I put that paper away. The next day, somehow, things went on and um, the next day, somehow, things went on and apparently it was, it was all right, the vice chancellor and other people came and said it was good, it was good. I have no idea what was said. A few months later, and then, you know, in the, in the management uh, department, we had a couple of other opportunities where I had to speak. So gradually, I was kind of maybe gaining a little bit confidence each time. And then after a few months, one day, just before the bhajan started, you know, those days before the bhajan started, uh, for about 15 minutes, there used to be uh, an instrumental flute uh, music played by someone live inside. The person would be sitting inside the bhajan hall. There were these two old uh, brothers, who, one of whom would be playing the uh, flute. So I was sitting outside uh, in the portico. Um, and there were a lot of school students around me that day. I was maybe in the third row. Swami comes out after the interviews. He comes straight to me and says, in front of where I was sitting, he didn't look directly at me. And he said, are you a speaker? I wasn't sure if Swami was asking me that question because he seemed to be looking around so I didn't know whether to say yes or no. And in any case, you know, you don't want to make the mistake of telling Swami you're a speaker. That's, that would be a terrible mistake. So I kept quiet. And the school children around, I think they were pretty convinced that Swami is not asking them, so they were looking at me. And I was not sure what to say. This was probably a few seconds gap in between Swami asking the question and the flute started from inside the bhajan hall. So they go by the time, you know, it doesn't matter whether Swami is outside or inside. The flute started and Swami suddenly looked up and said, I looked surprised and said, where is the sound coming from? And now all these schoolboys had the answer, they said, Swami from the speaker. And Swami this time looked straight at me and said, ah, see, the sound comes from the speaker, but the source is inside. I said, what a beautiful and a profound message. The source is inside. The sound just comes from the speaker. And then again, after a few months, I think, I don't remember exactly when, but after several months, there was another opportunity to speak and then Swami called, for a, called me for an interview afterwards, spoke for a long time. And then his, towards the end, he said, why do you get so nervous when you have to speak? 
and this was the best part coming now. He said, you see, you look at me. When I have to speak, I just stand up and talk. You also do that. Speak from your heart. And as if to reinforce this message, you know, yesterday when I was talking to Bhutia auntie, after a long time of seeing her, the one message that she had was what they experience is Swami says, you are only an instrument. I am the doer. And today morning, I just walked in for the Aarti after the bhajans. The thought for the day, the one line thought for the day was, you are an instrument, be an effective instrument. So this whole theme of you are a speaker, speaker doesn't mean someone who speaks, who gives great speeches. Because I know that's not what I am. I'm not a speaker, I'm not a singer. I mean, there are far better people in every respect. All I have to do is just stand. And Swami has said this several times, you become like the flute so that I can play.